In this class, we are going to learn how to create a Windows virtual machine in Azure with the help of Azure portal. I am here in the official documentation page by Microsoft. There are a couple of methods how we can create a virtual machine. One is with the help of CLI, Portal, PowerShell, Terraform, Bicep and the ARM template. So, I will provide this link in the description. You can check out the link if you are stuck anywhere while practicing this class. Now, without wasting much time, let's begin with our hands-on and navigate to portal.azure.com. So, once you are in the home screen for your portal.azure.com, click on this virtual machines. You will get the list of all the virtual machines created in your subscription and in your resource group. Click on this create and select the Azure virtual machine. You have to select the subscription under which you want to create the virtual machine and select the resource group so that you can efficiently manage the resources as part of the resource group policies and the governance. Now here we have to provide the virtual machine name. I will provide my Windows VM 100. So you can select the region. The cost for the virtual machines will vary across the region. Few regions are cheap and few will be costly. If you want to make this highly available and scalable, coming to the availability option, you have to select the virtual machine scale set so that you can have n number of VMs, so that redundant VMs across the fault domains and the zones and you can manage the load across the VMs by using the load balancer. Now here in the image, we have to select the windows. So I am going for the windows 2019 data center 64 gen 2. So I am selecting this 64 version, ARM version is not supported for this version of windows. Coming to the compute size, we can select the size over here. I am selecting the 2 vCPU and the 8 GB of memory. Coming to authentication, we have to provide the username and the password. I will quickly populate the username and the password over here. So once you have populated all the details, you have to enable the ports over here from which you will be sending the request. I will enable the SSH, RDP, HTTP using which protocol or the port you will be communicating with this VM. So you have to be little careful over here. You don't have to open unnecessarily the ports which you won't be using because hackers in the real world will be constantly searching for the resources whose ports are open in the public cloud and they can get into your VM and they can access other resources in the cloud. So once you are done with all the details, you can click on next on the disk. Suppose if you are having existing Windows Server license, you can just check mark this over here and you can save some cost that is up to 50% you can save. Click on the disk. Suppose if you want to save further cost, you can select the hard disk drive which are cheaper than the SSDs. If you want to attach other drives like the D drive, E drive, we can attach over here and the select the size. So this will impact your pricing. Coming to the networking, you have to select the virtual network, subnet and the IP address. All those are free as part of the Microsoft Azure offerings. Only you are charged for the compute and storage while creating the EM. If you are not having any previously created virtual networks, then you can create a new one. Suppose if you are having a multiple VMs as part of highly available and reliable architecture, then load balancing option will be there so that the load will be evenly distributed across the VMs. Coming to the management, here you can select the shutdown. Suppose if you want to save the cost as Azure is charging you only until you are making use of some resources on its cloud. So you can shut down this machine after some time in the day, you can set over here. Coming to the monitoring, you can enable the logs, you can have the alert sent to you whenever a CPU or the RAM usage exceeds the sum value. I don't want to have the alerts over here. Click on the advanced. Suppose if you want to run some scripts over here at the time of virtual machine creation, then you can place your scripts over here. Coming to the tags, you can add the tag like for what purpose and who has created this VM for. Coming to the review and create, you can see all the details what and all you have populated over here. So you are roughly getting charged 20 cents per hour for using this VM. So all the details will be available over here. So once you are happy with all the details what you have populated, click on this create. So this is going to take some time, couple of seconds or a minute until fully deployed. So we are going to pause this class over here for some seconds. Once your VM is successfully deployed, you will get the message on the right top corner. You can just click on this go to resource or you can go to the virtual machine, search for the virtual machine and search for the VM which you have created. Here in the overview, we will get the details for all the things related to the VM like the public IP address and so forth things. Now, if you want to connect this VM, we have to just click on this connect button on the top. As we had already opened the port for RDP, it is showing this option. Now, you can make use of this public IP address and the port number in order to get into this VM and manage the VM. Other option is we have to download this RDP file. So, it will download this RDP file. You have to just click on this. So it will launch the remote desktop connection on your computer, click on this connect. 
so it will ask for the username and password you have to provide the username and the password whichever you have used in order to configure the vm once done click on ok you will get some prompt like this click on s yes. it will open up the vm for you in the remote desktop protocol that is the rdp now i have minimized the window over here it will look something like this for you now you can open the powershell in this vm and you can manage this server i will launch this powershell over here and i will paste a command to install the web server until the web server gets installed let's have a overview over here if you click on the overview you will get all the details related to this vm suppose if you want to increase the disk size you can just go to the disk you can attach the new disk over here suppose if you want to change the compute you can go to the size over here and you can change the shape like the ram and the cpu for this vm suppose if you want to lock this vm for any reason you can do it over here suppose if you want to change the or reset the password you can provide the new password over here and the username now let's check the progress of our web server installation in the virtual machine it's still 44 percent let me just minimize this so once the web servers get successfully installed in the virtual machine you will be able to access the vm with the help of ip address now i will create the new browser tab over here and i will write http colon slash slash and the ip address that is the public ip address of this vm ending with 171 click on enter now if you click on enter nothing is happening it's just loading indefinitely now let's get back to this rdp open the powershell it's still 90 percent so we'll wait for some seconds So as you can see our server has been successfully installed let's first check within the vm itself whether we are able to access the web server or not so we will just provide over here the ip address of this vm that is http colon slash slash and paste the public ip address click on enter as you can see our page is not loading in spite of installing the web server let's now go back to the azure portal let me go to the networking over here and see whether we have the AT port enabled for the HTTP traffic. If you see, we don't have the port over here. We have to select the service as HTTP. Then the port 80. You can provide some meaningful name and click on add. Yeah, done. Now let's go back to the VM. Now let me just refresh. Let me refresh once again. Yeah, now our web server is loading. Now we will confirm this from the open internet as well that is by calling the same web server from our computer browser. I will create a new tab over here. I am currently in my local computer providing the IP address clicking on enter it is loading. So this is how you have to troubleshoot any issues like you have to open the ports then only you will be able to access the protocols. You were able to access the RDP protocol because we have selected this RDP at the time of creating this VM. We had also created this HTTP inbound but somehow it didn't come into the NSD. If you are finding difficult like accessing any particular protocol like HTTP, SSH, RDP, you have to come to this networking and you have to see the ports whether they are opened for inbound traffic or not. So in this class we had seen in detail how to create a Windows based virtual machine in Azure with the help of Azure portal. We had also seen how to use the RDP that is remote desktop protocol and we can access the VM and manage the virtual machine or the server also we had seen how we can install the web server and access with the help of the web browser the websites also we had seen how to add the inbound port that is under the networking in the network security group that is we enabled the port 80 then only we were able to communicate with the help of http protocol